I'm Dr. Harry Howarda, and I have been asked to reflect on Christian witnessing. And I think the Bible speaks to that most clearly and the ministry of reconciliation from Paul in 2 Corinthians 5. And I'd like to just read a few verses of those to introduce us into Christian witnessing. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded in Christ this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave to each of us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men or women's sins against them. And he has committed to us, as you and me, the message of reconciliation. We, you and I, are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making this appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And God made him who is no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When I returned from my mission work in Africa several years ago, I joined a partner in Indiana for about 15 years. While I was at that hospital, the emergency room had no physicians, and so our office was 21 miles from the hospital. So the round trip of 42 miles usually took us a little over an hour. When new patients came to the hospital, they were referred to the doctors on the staff on a rotating basis. And when you were called, it then became your patient. One of the patients I received one day was a prostitute from the city of El Parazo in Indiana. And when she arrived at the emergency room, she told them that Dr. Howarda was her physician. After I could free myself up from the office, I made the 21 mile trip to her office to take care of her, need, of her needs. Over the next three years, she would appear in the emergency room three to four times a year. And she would always tell the doctors that Dr. Howarda was her physician. And I would make the 42 mile round trip to the emergency room to care for her. She never came to my office for follow up and she never offered to pay even a penny of the costs of my travel and of the costs of her medical care. Near the end of our third year of our doctor patient relationship, she became severely ill and I was forced to hospitalize her for a worth with a, a week with a IV antibiotics. The day before her discharge was Sunday and I made sure that I could sit down and talk with her before she was discharged. So she became the last patient of my day on Saturday. So when I came into her room, I pulled up a chair and I sat down at her bedside we had a long conversation. She told me her life story and how she had come from a home where her mother was a religious fanatic. Her mother knew only the law of God. She knew nothing about God's love or God's mercy. This young lady began to act out in high school and rebel against her mother's church and her mother's religion and she acted out sexually in high school. And when she came to college, it only became worse. She continued to act out sexually with anyone and everyone. She even performed an abortion on one of her roommates and then came her life of prostitution. I told her that there were three things. She had to know to find peace and comfort from God. It comes from our old Heidelberg Catechism. First, to realize how great her sins were. Secondly, how she could be delivered. And finally, how she could show her grace and gratitude to God 
for such a, for such a deliverance. I told her we didn't need to talk about her sin and it obviously overwhelmed her. I said, I think your real problem is you don't believe that God can still forgive you after all of these years of prostitution. You know, you've never come to my office for follow up. You've never paid even a penny of your bill and I'm not asking for payment. But may I ask you a question? During these past three years of our doctor-patient relationship, have you ever felt that I ever treated you with less than kindness or respect? And she immediately said no. And explained that I was a sinner too. Not burdened by the sins that were burdening her, but a sinner saved by God's grace. During the past three years, I had only shared some of God's grace with her. And I said, if I can forgive you, certainly God can. She was discharged and moved out of the area. Six to eight weeks later, my secretary came walking down the hall of the hallway, waving a small card in her hand. Doc, she says, you got to read this. It was a small thank you note. And inside was a small check for $10. The note explained that she had left her life of prostitution and was moved with friends to and relatives into the state of Michigan. But at the bottom of the note, she had printed in large letters, thank you for showing me the love of God. 